Hello everybody and welcome to another Unity game development video. In today's uh, Brain 9 devlog I'm going to go over some of the um, powers in the game. There's these kind of telepathic uh, abilities and um, one of the most typical ones of that is you know lifting objects with your mind and floating them around and potentially launching them all over the place to um, I don't know solve puzzles or defeat enemies and stuff like that. Um, I'm just gonna jump right into the game and then I'll talk about what's going on. Um, I have a stand-in character for the main character, Brainine, and um, it'll eventually be a dog model, but for now it is a blue sphere. Um, if I move around, you can see there's a reticle in the middle of the screen, and currently the reticle's white. Um, once I can target something and lift it using that power, then uh, it'll turn green. And you can see I'm not within range to grab an object, so currently white, and if I move closer, it's going to turn green. That means I can select any of these objects to start picking them up with telekinesis and uh, throw them around, manipulate them in the game world. Um, so with left mouse click, I can pull it out. You can see there's a visual effect um, thing going on there, some particle effects. And there is a shader that's showing uh, a slight Fresnel effect at certain angles. And um, just a uh, Voronoi function or... Uh, you know, noise moving over the object. Um, and these will track it wherever it goes. Um, I am currently holding right click and the object is changing colors. Um, this is to indicate the increase in power level showing how, um, how much force is going to go into the object. If I let go, it's gonna go really far. And if I grab one and then I don't use much force, I just hold it until, say, green, let go, it'll go a lot shorter. Um, and I can use this to destroy objects or maybe potentially solve puzzles. And uh, it's kind of fun already and there's barely anything in the game. Now if I jump out of the game, I'm going to move over to the inspector and there's this um, power telekinesis script running. Um, we're just going to look at some of the um, variables of the script. Here is the TK key for telekinesis key, and that's just a normal key code, so it's using mouse zero. Um, this pivot here, if I find it in here, it is part of the camera rig that's attached to the player. Um, there's a rig that's kind of an empty game object, a pivot Y that's rotating on the Y axis, and a pivot X that's rotating on the X axis. These are child objects. When the um, empty that's controlling uh, the space in which the object is lurping to um, is placed at start then that is placed within this pivot X and then it's um, somewhere in there so that it's pretty much setting it at a local position um, that's kind of made different from the original position by two variables that control its Y position and um, its local X pushing it out from the character and then it is setting it to the parent, um, setting it to, as a child object of uh, that pivot X so that it um, retains that distance. Now if I go back to the player, um, we also have a target object. That's the object that is being grabbed when the game is playing. If I just play here, and we have a rigid body object. So essentially it's grabbing that target object, and it is also grabbing its rigid, rigid body. You can see on the right there, there's cube 10 and cube 10 rigid body. This uh, control point is that empty object that's being set um, in there. So if I find it, it's currently right here in a subfolder of um, powers, telekinesis, control point. But when I press play, it should move. Yep, now it is in pivot X and it's inheriting that position you could see up there in the scene view. This throw direction variable is a vector 3 and it's just finding the vector in which the object is going to be um, forced into a direction. So actually if I pick up the object and I don't initiate a throw, say I pick it up like this and I don't hold right click to spin it and uh, potentially throw it, I can actually just toss it using its own momentum.
The target lerp speed is um, the float that determines the speed in which the object will lerp to the position of that empty object. The, um, what is it called, control point. And um, that actually slightly increases over time until it caps off at about um, 1, I believe. It goes from 0 to 1, and it slowly kind of lerps to that speed so that you get a smooth sort of... Um, it gives off the impression that the character is, you know, building up the ability to lift it off the floor. Like, it slowly lifts off the ground and goes to the point in which you're controlling it. In TK and TK Ready, I'm not sure if these bulls are actually used right now, but they'll be useful in the future. Um, in TK is showing whether or not um, the power is being used, and TK Ready is showing if the power is available to be used. Uh, the Power VFX is the FX that we have there. Um, I have it up here in a tab to show, and it might take a second to load. But here it is, and we'll go back to it in a second. VFX target, um, that is the object in which the um, VX, VFX particles are trying to move to the position of, and I'll explain more of that when we get to the actual um, effect. But essentially there is a VFX target object, and that is while this power is being used set to the position of the target so that it's moving towards it. The range um, is the range in which the reticle will turn green, indicating that the um, ability is able to be used when, when it's within distance. Um, that can be adjusted, of course, that's the whole point of the variable. And um, I might actually increase that a little bit, but just for the sake of the demonstration, I'll increase it to 100, and it should let me target the object from very far away. The control distance is the distance in which the um, control point is set relative to that pivot that I showed you. Um, if I set that to further or closer away, um, when it brings that control point to the position of the pivot, it's taking that um, float number and it is determining how far it should be from the player. So essentially the control point is the empty space um, above the character and in front of it where the object is going to lerp to when the power is being used and we can affect the position of that using the um, control distance variable and the control y offset variable. The y offset is just um, that we can increase its um, height. So we might not want it to be directly in front of the player because it might look kind of awkward. It might look more interesting if the um, object was raised. The reticle here is just a um, extremely simple image that I uh, made up in Photoshop really quick. I think I took like a 500 point uh, soft brush and just pressed it once in the middle of the canvas and then moved the canvas size to fit it and then resize the image to um, still have a sharp object but um, you know work a little better than that. Power shader intensity is just a um, a float that's being used in the shader right here. The shade test, uh, the intensity right here, is just using that variable to determine how powerful these effects should be, so that they're not kind of overbearing or too subtle. Particle amount is a integer that is being used in this VFX graph. Um, it's the amount right here, and that's showing how many objects. Um, so each of these individual power levels that you saw while the um, character was using the ability are listed here, and each of them have their own little um, variable. I understand that there is definitely some way I can nest these variables or create kind of a generic object that all these attributes would apply to, but this is more of a proof of concept kind of thing, and I'll go in and I'll make things um, more functional and more proficient in the future but um and efficient but right now it's fine for what it is i just wanted to make sure that it works so the first attribute of the kind of object is the color and we could change that for each of them uh the power and that's just how far it's going to throw it the rotation which is just how quickly um it's going to rotate the object every frame 
and as you can see it slowly increases over time and I've done a little bit of tweaking to make sure that this seems like a natural progression. Um, just for the sake of demonstration I can take the second color here and I'm going to dramatically increase the rotation value and the power so that we could see it go crazy. And obviously that's definitely way too much for it. And I almost forgot to mention that in um, all the attributes there is a requirement right here. And that's um, in the code that's running the um, function that changes the colors and the different attributes of each of the power levels. Um, there is a float that counts up with um, time.delta time. And that's just the time requirement um, for each of them that's determining when it should happen. So as that power level is increasing, um, it there isn't one for power level zero because it's already um, going to be the default. As it rises up to one, it's going to switch to green. Rise up to 2.2, it's going to go to yellow, and it's just more than um, what it was before. Like um, you'd think that it would double to go to zero, but I put it slightly higher so that it seems more like a power build. Um, 3.4 and then 5.2 so it's slowly building up to those different values so that you can use different power levels um, if we go into the actual code I'm not going to go over these variables again because I just explained them but now I'm going to go through what's actually happening in the code so what's happening here is the control points local position is being set to um, the position of that pivot that I mentioned uh, with the Y offset and the offset in the distance so it's setting that there and then it's parenting it to that object and I already explained that. And here we're setting or uh, using a function called get target. Um, and it's essentially using a ray cast. It's shooting out at the object. If it hits the object and it makes sure that the object has a rigid body and that there currently isn't a target, then it is going to set the reticle to green. And it's going to allow the player to press the TK key, which is mouse zero. And it's going to set the target to the game object that's currently selected. It's going to grab that rigid body. It's going to zero out the rigid body's angular velocity because if it doesn't do that, when we apply the rotational force of the kind of power charging thing, um, that might conflict with the rotational force that's already inherited from the object's movement before it was grabbed. So if the object was rolling down a hill and then we grabbed it with that telekinetic ability, it might twitch and stutter because those forces might be fighting each other. So it's easier to just angular, um, zero out those uh, forces. Um, it is grabbing the target's uh, renderer and is setting the float for the um, shader intensity to um, whatever it's set to in the inspector. So currently, by default, the material's intensity is set to zero and then it's set to whatever the intensity is set to in the inspector, so it's as if it's being activated. I'm sure there's some kind of bool you could use in um, the actual shader, but for now I have it like this. And the reason I had it like this is because um, I had changed the intensity of the effect with each power level, but as it happens with HDR colors, it doesn't really make that much of an effect, and um, changing it too much... It's either... It's either it's very low or it's incredibly bright because of the HDR. So it's not really worth it to tweak those values. Um, and the reticle color, if it is not sensing all that, then the reticle color is set to white. Um, and then we have a second function that's also being run in here. I'm not sure if that's the right thing to do. I'd probably make a coroutine that it goes into once the um, object is grabbed. Um, but right down here is manipulates the target. If rigid body isn't null, and um, we start pressing the TK key, um, the integer, the amount of VFX particles is set to the particle amount, and the um, vector 4 here is the kind of color and alpha channel for the color in the effect. So that color in the effect is being changed to the power level, or the current power level that's there. At the beginning, it's being set to the default of level 0. Um, the VFX target object is being set to um, our position, or the target's position actually, because I was thinking of the actual um, VFX object, but that's already parented um, to the player. Um, the target for the VFX um, 
object is being set to the target position. We're accessing the render again and we're setting the um, shader intensity and the um, colors. Um, the rigid body is told not to use gravity because it's easier just not to fight the forces of gravity or any other acting forces on the object and the velocity is also zeroed for the same reason. Um, if the object's alert speed is um, lower than the maximum, this could be set to a variable, but right now it's fine. Um, if it's lower than that, then we're going to add time at delta time divided by 50. Um, it's only divided by 50 because I want it to be a lot slower. Um, if we are not pressing the mouse one key, uh, we're getting the throw vector. So if we're not pressing the key that starts the power up for the throw, then it's constantly um, calculating the tossing kind of vector where the object is moving back and forth and it's going to sort of inherit the velocity of the movement um, of the space it's moving in. And the reason we are using that is because since we are actually just lerping it to the position instead of enacting a force on it into that position, um, it's not going to inherit that movement velocity. If we didn't do this and then we just let go of the key that was making sure that the power was holding the object, it would just fall straight down. Uh, almost as if we um, canceled out the velocity of the object. Um, and the reason I'm not using the rigid body in a way in which it'll just keep enacting forces on the object to push it towards that one position is it creates a kind of um, bobbing effect where the object is falling and then pushing itself to that position and then falling again and pushing it and pushing itself too hard and overshooting it then pushing itself back and then it's pushing itself back but also messing up with the gravity and then flying back and it creates this kind of elliptical orbit and it's um it's not what i'm going for this is the point in which the object is um lurping to the position of the target point um and if we press the mouse button to throw it it starts a coroutine so the coroutine actually uses a bool as um kind of a variable that's inputted into it as it's called um this bool is, where is it, throw, and it says uh, bool forward. So we're detecting whether or not the object is going to be thrown or it's just going to inherit the velocity of its movement. So what's happening is that, it's, um, is that when its function is being called with the mouse button down, it's setting it to true, so it's determining that um, the object should be thrown. Um, if we get the key up, that's originally holding the object, then it calls the routine but sets that flag to false. So all it does is run the um, uh, getting the vector of the object being thrown and then uses that to add the force. Um, to determine the throw vector, um, there's a vector 3 and it's taking the position of the object, then it's waiting for the end of the frame, then it's getting uh, another vector which is the exact same uh, it's not the same value, but it's getting the position of the object again after that frame. And then it's subtracting it so that we can get the um, vector between them. And that's a throw direction. So if we are throwing it, um, there's a do while operator here. And it says um, the throw direction is the pivot.transform.forward um, with a little bit of math here uh, plus the vector so what's happening is I'm just adding an upward force to it and I'm averaging them out. So we're taking the forward vector, which is five, and the vector three up, which is one, we add them together. And so we have to divide by six to get the average at the end. Right here we have a um, array that's just kind of showing the forces in uh, debug mode. So that's not really important. If the timer is below the requirement for level one, then the color is set to power level zero, the material is set to that, all that stuff, all those things that I've already showed you inspector is being run here. Um, the force is being set to whatever the force is set for the zero power level, and the rotation force is the same. So it's doing that for each of these objects, and these are logical kind of operators that are determining the values. And um, it's actually not really more proficient to use a switch here, so I just use else if statements. And uh, these are being determined by that float, that force timer float that I was telling you about, where it's counting up by time, that delta time, to determine which power level to use. 
and it, that is being that is happening right here where the force timer is lower than the maximum power level requirement it's going to count up by time the delta time and then that rotational force is being ran outside after we determine the power level um, then it finishes that that's all happening if mouse one is being used and if it's not running that kind of throwing function where it's just kind of throwing it based on its calculated its momentum then it's um, going to calculate a different force here instead of setting it based on the power levels and there's some weird little math I did um, and it seems like a nice realistic looking determination of how it would look if it was just thrown to the side using the momentum of what was carrying it we're adding that force uh, based on the throw direction which is an impulse force and since the um, after the object is released by the TK ability its um, vectors are zeroed out for the rotational force we're just adding one last rotational force with the add torque function because what's happening with um, rotating it in the script earlier is we're actually rotating the object we're not adding a force to it so in this scenario we can add the force and then drop the object because we are losing it as a target losing its rigid body um, we can add that force and it will keep that force going because of the momentum um, so it's like we're still controlling it but it's just kind of keeping that force from earlier um, the amount of particles set to zero so the particles that still exist are going out but um, it won't create any more and the lerp speed is set to zero so it could be incremented again later and the object uses gravity so um, all that works really well and uh, I'm sure I can make it more efficient and I'll do that in the future but I like how it works right now back in the um, actual unity aspects of it if I go to the shader you have a basic kind of Voronoi um, noise that I'm using and it's just creating this kind of lightning -y type of effect that's overlaid on the object uh, if you want to learn about shaders um, you can find a lot of great tutorials for that on YouTube but I will not go into that right here because it's uh, kind of complicated well, it's not super complicated it's just not the point of this video so if you want to learn about that um, go watch another video and if I go over here to the sh um, visual effect um, part of this is worth mentioning I'm not gonna go in a whole lot about how visual effects work but one interesting part here that's part of the ability is that the particles move towards the object that's being carried um, and that is achieved here by I'm getting the current position of the particle in world space and I'm subtracting it from the targets position and then I'm normalizing that um, that vector so that it doesn't speed up too much over time I mean uh, over distance and I'm increasing that speed over time uh, and I have a multiplication thing here so that I can just change how fast I want that to move in the inspector and I'm just feeding that through a uh, force node in the update section so every frame it's going to push that object towards the target and that's pretty much all I have to talk about. My throat's hurting because I've been talking for a while. But um, I thought it was kind of interesting, and I thought you might think it was interesting too. If you like the video, please um, like the video <laughs> with a thumbs up. And uh, subscribe, hit that dumb bell thing, comment. Um, I don't know. But uh, thank you for watching, and it was um, fun to make and fun to talk about. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.